heading 185, reduce speed 182 and off. 185 on the heading 180 on speed off there, 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 and off to 40 and me. 160 to 40, speed 121. Hello guys, Matt here. I hope you are well and welcome to Tuesday's video. It is Tuesday because... Well, it's Tuesday, and I'm putting this video out on the same day that I record it. And the reason why is because, well, I don't know where to start. <laughs> what is wrong with people? I, I just literally came back from Cosford, uh, what, yesterday. Um, been at the Flight Sim Show all weekend, and, and like, it's been the, the most beautiful time. Met a bunch of developers, a bunch of, uh, you know, you guys, and a bunch of everybody else. And, and I really enjoyed myself, and the... The, the amount of people that came up to me and, and were talking to me about P3D and, and the future of Flight Sim and this, that, and the other. And everybody seems so sensible and just so, you know, switched on and on the ball. And then I come home and I start to browse Facebook like an idiot. But I'm kind of glad I did because this is the whole reason why this video exists. And I found that a lot of people were spreading uh, misinformation about P3D and this whole update process. Uh, for those of you that don't know, P3D version 4.1 is about to launch this afternoon or this evening uh, in, in the UK this afternoon and in sort of the US side of things. Um, and there's been a lot of people on Facebook saying, oh my god, it's a full reinstall, you're going to have to reinstall all your scenery, all your aircraft, this, that and the other. Basically crying for the sake of it. Um, and, and I have absolutely no idea where this has come from. Um, the only time I've ever had to reinstall P3D was moving from version 3 to version 4. All of the Intermediate 3 releases I've never had to do it. And, and the same goes for the Intermediate 4 releases as well. The way Lockheed Martin work nowadays is in a modular fashion. So they basically uh, push updates out for the individual components of P3D, uh, which are the client, the content, and the scenery. And uh, all you need to do is just update the, the relative ones. Um, so why people are going around saying that it's a full reinstall, I have... I have oh, Try again, I have absolutely no idea, but I can categorically assure you that you are not going to spend the next day or two or three reinstalling all of your add-ons. So there is a bit of a caveat on that, but I'll go into that a little bit later on. Uh, it's a really simple process. I mean, it's being actively developed on. It's not dead like Flight Sim, uh, FSX even. Uh, they are working as hard as they can to make the, the process very streamlined. And, uh, you know, again, for them, it, it's, a, it's a bandwidth saver as well because P3D is a huge add-on. And if they have to keep distributing the full thing every single time, it's going to cause them some headaches. At the moment, you could only download the full package, but uh, rumors have it that over the course of the, the coming months and years, they're going to streamline it into actual modular downloads. So you just download the client. You just download download the uh, the content or the scenery um, but yeah so hopefully this video will, will kind of show you uh, how to oh well it's not going to hopefully it is this is what this video is it's an update video it's it's to show you how to update your p3d and it's also to show you how to update your scenery and manage your scenery properly there is a new way of doing things that have been that's been available to us uh, since version 3 of P3D and just because of the lack of time on my end I've never posted a video about it and it's only when the switch to version 4 happened that uh, and only a few developers uh, be it FS Dream Team and Flightbeam use it uh, this new method of, of adding scenery to the scenery library no one really has uh, has jumped on that bandwagon which is very sad because when you update uh, when you update P3D and you want to update it without having to reinstall stuff uh, i.e. your add-ons uh, this is the perfect solution and yet no one has, has properly done it I don't really understand why um, so yeah back to the point the first part of this video is going to be how to manage your add-ons and then that will fall nicely into how you update to P3D version 4 to version 4.1 so we will start in your documents folder I'm gonna make this short and sweet I could explain to you in real detail how this works but I'm pretty sure no one cares and you just want it to work so that's what I'll aim for 
there is a file or a folder even in P3 in your documents folder, sorry, uh, called P3D version for add-ons. Inside here, it may be empty for you, it may be full. This is the folder that P3D reads its add-ons from. And when I say add-ons, I don't just mean scenery, I mean aircraft as well. A2A simulations are using this method and they use it very well. I'm not sure about any other add-on aircraft developers. I know PMDG definitely do not. Uh, the FS Labs uh, version uh, for P3D version 4 is not available yet, so I don't know if they're doing it this way either, but whatever. As far as I know, scenery-wise, FS Dream Team, Flight Beam, and as far as aircrafts go, uh, A2A, they are definitely using this method. Um, if I go now into uh, my P3D drive, which is uh, drive D, uh, this will probably make a little bit more sense. Inside your documents folder, you have this, and then inside the add-ons folder, you have individual folders for your scenery. If you double-click these, inside every single one will be an add-on.xml. You can see I could click through these all day. This add-on XML gives you an XML file which is relative to where this scenery is located. So if I go to this one here for Sky Harbor uh, Phoenix, I'm trying to make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Uh, this scenery is located in D, which is this drive, add-on manager, which is what they call the add-on manager, ironically, uh, be, be it Flight Beam and, and FS Dream Team. Flight Beam, which is here, and then uh, Phoenix, which is here, and then it declares that this is a scenery and this is a texture. This is the way they've chose to write this add-on XML, that it will accept these parameters with zero problems you can look at what other parameters you can put into this if you're one of those advanced users within the uh, the P3D SDK or it's now called the PDK uh, and you can get it to work that way. So you are essentially just linking this to a folder within another place that isn't the root of P3D. Now if you wanted to move this to a different file, let's say you wanted to rename add-on manager to just manager, all you need to do is just update the relative directories, which I hope makes sense. I mean, it's a really simple thing. This means now that when you reinstall P3D, should you have to, the only thing that's ever going to get reinstalled is the core files, which are located, in my instance, in this uh, folder here. So this will all change, but everything outside it won't. So then when you reload P3D, after a re uh, reinstall, P3D will then scan all of this and then go, OK, do you want to use this? And then you just say yes, and you know you're good to go. So, for the, the add-on developers that don't do this, uh, I have created my own add-on scenery folder. This is external to P3D. P3D will not touch this when you uninstall it or update it, so it means that all of this is safe. Um, all of these add-ons were originally installed into the P3D root folder. Then I, I moved them out into the add-on scenery folder, and I created the... Uh, relevant folders in the documents folder. So let's just take the Manchester Extreme for example. This was installed originally into a UK2000 folder within P3D. I then took it out and put it into P3D add-on scenery and then in my documents P3D version 4 add-ons folder I make a folder which is identically named to this doesn't have to be, it's only the add-on XML that counts, but I figured if I named it the same it would make sense. And then I wrote an add-on XML file, and all I've said is that the name is UK2000 Manchester Extreme, the description is UK2000 Manchester Extreme Scenery, it's uh, an add-on component, so the category is Scenery, and then the path goes to Manchester Extreme, which is in D, P3D, add-on scenery, as you can see here, UK2000 uh, UK Manchester Extreme, which is also here, and then the name of it to appear in the scenery library is just UK2000 Manchester Extreme. It works completely fine. Now, that is, that is how I've done every single one of them. Same for the, the common library. If you have a common library that you need to add in, I know uh, UK2000 uses one and Flight Tamper also uses one as well. If we look here, there's a library there. Uh, the, way, the way to sort it is just the same. You, you name Flight Tamper libraries, you make an add-on XML, and you just say it's scenery, and you add it, and, and away you go. Um, 
the way I started to write these was just to find one that already existed. So I would take, um, let's say, one from FS Dream Team or from Flight Beam, copy it across, and then just make sure all the directories were updated to the right place. It's that simple. I just don't understand why it's been so such a long time coming. Um, I said there was a caveat with, with Orbex, and I'll explain to you what that's all about right now. Uh, the way Orbex does stuff, I don't really understand, although I'm supposed to, as I, I was uh, developing the Orbex Direct website um, and the FTX Central client alongside Ben. Um, we, me and him did that. So we should really understand why this is done the way it's done, but I'm not going to pretend I do. Um, it's all still with inside the sim with Orbex. I, I don't know why they do it. I, I don't proclaim to, to really care. Uh, I'm hoping in the future they will move it outside of the sim. But for, for this stuff, um, if you then reinstall P3D, you're going to lose it all. All you really need to do is just copy it out of the sim, make a backup of it, just leave it on your, your desktop or something. And then when you've reinstalled P3D, just drag it back in and it will figure itself out. As long as you then rerun FTX Central version 3 and just apply in any phase of, of, of FTX Central, it will re-add all of those scenery config entries back to your your scenery config and then you're pretty much good to go um aircraft don't bother with just yet pmdg and stuff like that you may just have to reinstall those i've not tried to run them in the the third party environment at the moment um i only know a2a is the ones that do that but i don't have any a2a aircraft installed so that's the kind of quick and dirty way of making sure that 90% of your scenery is saved and that you don't actually have to reinstall all of the scenery once you've reformatted your computer or reinstalled P3D or whatever. It seems like a long-winded process, but it really isn't. It's just as simple as creating a folder that is uh, relative to the name of the scenery, making an add-on XML, and away you go. All right, so on to the actual updating of P3D. Um, it, it's really simple. Uh, we have uh, this here. This is Professional Plus. This is the release version that you'll all be getting later on today. Um, they gave me Professional Plus. I don't know why. I could have just done with the normal one, but it is what it is. Inside, you will see that you have a bunch of uh, files, cab files, and also you'll see install client, install content, and install scenery. This is the modular system I was talking about. So all we need to do is we need to extract this, and I know as soon as it does, it's going to ask me for a password. So I'm just going to go grab that, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so while that's extracting, what I can do is I can go to uh, my C Cleaner. I can open my C Cleaner up. I can go to Tools. I can then go to. You can do this in uh, Add Remove Programs in Windows if you want, but I like C Cleaner. It's way better. Uh, I can go to Lockheed Martin's P3D, which is here. And all I need to do is on the client, right click and uninstall and press yes. And then it wants to deactivate it. Yes, you have successfully deactivated and now it's uninstalling. So that's done that. I can also, if I want to, if they so uh, need us to, uninstall the content. Now. As long as we don't uninstall this, this professional plus bit here, then everything else is fine. So if I uninstall the content, which is relatively straightforward, we can do this. Like so. And then once we've done this, we can uninstall the scenery. And then all we need to do is reinstall all of the individual components from the thing we're extracting now and we're good to go and this saves you literal days of having to reinstall things they do it this way on purpose and you really have to thank them for it because some of the file sizes on this stuff is insane okay so this is just about to be finished extracting which it has we can now open it let's do client first so agree next uh, find it we just need to make sure it goes to the right place so We'll go to flight sim and then like this. Next, install. It's updating everything as we need to. That's done. Now the content's the same. And now that should validate everything. And it should recognize our install now because we did the client. 
Okay, so that's the content done, and then last of all, uh, last but not least, the scenery, and then that can go in like so. Okay, so that's the scenery done, and that's it sorted. All you need to do now is run P3D as uh, administrator, like so, and you can see I've already purchased as like would like to activate, activate online, and uh, I'll put all my details in here, and then once I've done that. We are pretty much ready to go. License ID, license password, activate. Activation successful. Loading itself up. Now, just a word with this. You have, uh, because I've uh, reinstalled the content and the scenery, if you have things like sky textures or PTA shader stuff, you will have to reapply those. Um, I'm uh, in the process of making a new version of PTA uh, for the, the coming uh, days so you can use that uh, with no problem. But things like if you use Rex or EnvTex or whatever all the random stuff is called, uh, then you just need to reapply those. But as far as everything else, like all of your add-ons, your sceneries and stuff like that, uh, aircraft and sceneries and stuff like that should work if we just go into the uh, actual sim, which because we've changed has actually gone over to my left hand screen for some reason let me just bring it over here um, it's loading on the other screen but it'll it'll appear on this screen when it's done um, but yeah because we because we've done the content you really need to reapply those things uh, but that's really it the, the update is is relatively straightforward and for any of the micro updates so version 4.1 2 3 4 5 6 infinity up until probably version 5 it's just the same logic there's nothing to it. It's just uninstalling the modules, reinstalling the modules, reactivating said modules, and away you go. I'm just on 80% here, 100% loaded. Here we go. Let's just mute the sound so we can see what's what. Uh, it's always black to start with as the new shaders take effect. Uh, but what you can see is if we go into uh, scenery library right now, all of your scenery that is from the documents folder, if you remember, documents... P3D version 4 add-ons, see? They're all there. So there's, uh, let's see, FS Dream Team Vancouver is, uh, where's Vancouver? CYVR, see? It's all there. And then all of the stuff, uh, Orbex stuff and stuff like that, that's all the same. Um, and, and that's that. It, it's really that simple. Um, Chase Plane still works. You can see me panning around with it. Uh, the, the shader stuff will, will fix itself after the first load. Um, and that's all you really need to do. It, it should only take you the best part of half an hour, honestly, not even that. Uh, in fact, this is the first time I updated my P3D from uh, version 4.0 to version 4.1. I did it kind of live on the video because I've honestly not had time to, to even touch it. Um, there are a lot of cool features with 4.1. They will probably release the uh, the changelog uh, later on. There's a lot of visual performance, uh, or visual enhancements and performance enhancements. Uh, and, and of course, which is something is really exciting for me, is complete full VR support now, which is something that I was lacking in the last version. Um, but yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, stick them below the, uh, the video. And uh, I'll do my best to get back to you and answer them. Um, I'm trying my, my utmost at the moment to kind of answer everybody. I've been doing a pretty decent job of it. Uh, but as I promised, back to normal videos. I'm going to try to put out at least one or two a week. Um, don't forget, if you if you miss me that much, <laughs> then uh, I stream Friday, Saturday, Sunday evening, twitch.tv forward slash bellins. Uh, and that's from 5 p.m. UK time till normally sort of 10, 11, 30 p.m. ish. Um, and that is really all I've got to say. If you like the video, of course, let me know. And uh, until the next one, enjoy version 4.1. And I'll see you later. Ta-ra for now.